Our top story this week. In Massachusetts, the body of a five-year-old boy who has been missing for months, thus setting off the greatest child welfare media circus of 2014, has been found dead on the side of the highway. The boy's real father thinks that they should be jailing the CPS agents who failed him. He also believes that the mother and her boyfriend had help in disposing the body. Meanwhile, Massachusetts CPS agents are protesting their caseloads, which are growing thanks to the publicity surrounding the case. Governor Deval Patrick is standing behind his girl, CPS boss over the roach and is calling for more money for the child protective industry. And the Massachusetts Secretary of Health and Human Services wants Justina Pelletier back in Connecticut. In Florida this week, the system sucks are upset about the legislature's rewrite of child welfare laws, saying that hiring more investigators without funding the services to keep the kids safe would only cause more of a crisis than they already have, with one of those changes being the requirement for college degrees for CPS agents, which will of course shrink the pool of qualified candidates. But the Florida State Senate unanimously passes the bill anyway. Governor Rick Scott apparently tried to get a last minute amendment passed that would have weakened the bill but withdraws it at the last minute and they also reject the child welfare agency's attempts to rewrite the bill. In Arizona this week, depending on what news source you read, either five or six high-ranking CPS agents get fired for closing more than 6,500 child abuse reports without investigations. Arizona Governor Jan Brewer calls a special session of the legislature to try to prioritize child protection in the state and Arizona's Legislative House okays appropriation for an external review of the state's child protective industry. In Texas, the child protective industry in El Paso is struggling with a lack of English-speaking foster homes. Texas is also being sued by a New York-based child advocacy group who is claiming that they're taking too many kids and keeping them in foster care for too long. In Florida, a teacher who had sex with a student was allowed to teach in Polk County regardless of the fact that the Orange County Public Schools and the child protective industry knew of her prior misconduct. In California, California, after an eight-month investigation, a commission finds that the Los Angeles County child protective industry to be a system in crisis, but none of them can figure out how to deal with the mess. In Maine, the child protective industry is hiring more CPS agents so they can start messing with daycare providers. And in North Carolina, oversight of the child protective industry's cases is being recommended. In Missouri, the Jackson County child protective industry continues to fall short despite all kinds of money being pumped into the system. While in Montana, the child protective industry feels that they don't have enough money and that their CPS agents are overwhelmed and overworked because of it. And in South Carolina, a state senator is calling on the governor to fire their CPS boss, saying that she violated state statutes and endangered the lives of children. In New Zealand, a social worker is fired for not telling his superiors that a child in their care was missing. In Canada, the government of Alberta changes the rules allowing the publication of the names of the kids who die while in foster care, while a teenager from Alberta dies by suicide while being kept hostage in a group home. And the former foster mother of a little girl who nearly starved to death in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia will be allowed to spend the last third of her two-year prison sentence in the community. In England, a real father wins damages after being falsely accused of abuse by a British social worker. A British judge is slamming the child protective industry over the piss-poor care of a disabled two-year-old who they stole. And British police are warning real parents about an alleged phony social worker who came knocking on a woman's door with a fake ID badge and legally kidnapped warns that you should beware of the real ones too. In California, it is revealed that a foster parent who put an 11-month-old baby into a coma apparently shook her. And the former foster mother of the little girl named Princess who is now lying in a coma is upset because they took her from her wonderful foster home and put her in with the piece of shit who did that. In Montana, a man gets 40 years for kidnapping his former foster mom and is demanding information to help him rob the bar that she worked at. And in New York, a 17-year-old is arrested for threatening to kill a social worker. In Alaska, a foster parent is arrested for sexually abusing a kid in his care. In Florida, a teacher who had sex with a student was allowed to teach in Polk County regardless of the fact that the Orange County Public Schools and the child protective industry knew of her prior misconduct. In Rantoul, Illinois, a foster parent is charged with murdering a seven-week-old in his care. In Louisiana, a foster father is on trial for first-degree murder regarding a three-year-old in his care. And in Kentucky, a trial is set for next month for a CPS agent whose record tampering may have contributed to the beating deaths of two children. In Connecticut, the lawyer for a transgendered foster kid who was placed in an adult jail is calling the kid's imprisonment unconstitutional. In Michigan, the Supreme Court rules against a biological grandmother from Florida who wanted and should have had custody of her stolen grandchildren, saying that blood doesn't even matter to them one bit. In New York, a two-year-old dies in a Yonkers foster home. And finally, tonight in South Carolina, a boy's home settles a lawsuit with a former resident who says he was sexually assaulted by an older child in the home. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, 
visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.